Please support our work by becoming a member of the Expose the Enemy channel and get access to new parts of the unauthorized history of the American century. Okay, this is John of ExposeTheEnemy.com. I'm posting this on YouTube on the Expose the Enemy channel, all one word, and on the Odyssey backup at Expose the Enemy colon B. So let's take a look at Adnan Khashoggi. Born on the 25th of July 1935 in Mecca, his father Muhammad was King Abdul Abziz Al Saud's personal doctor. In the 1960s and 70s, Khashoggi helped bring together Western companies and the Saudi Arabian government to satisfy its infrastructure and defence needs. Khashoggi's first weapon deals involved providing David Sterling with weapons for a covert mission in Yemen during the 1963 aid and emergency, an armed insurgency by NLF, Marxists and FLOSY, Yemeni nationalists against the Federation of South Arabia, a protectorate of the United Kingdom. Between 1970 and 1975, Lockheed paid Khashoggi $106 million in commissions. Khashoggi met Richard Nixon in Paris in 1967. Khashoggi used an elaborate scheme to transfer funds to Nixon's crony, B.B. Rebozo, using the bank Key Biscayne Bank during the 1972 campaign. Khashoggi was involved in bribes in 1972 and 73 of two Saudi generals. The bribes involved defence contracts and paid Northrop to a concern controlled by Khashoggi, who served as a sales agent for a number of United States arms manufacturers, including Northrop. By 1976, Khashoggi had attracted the attention of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Agents attempted to serve him a subpoena but failed and Khashoggi fled the country. Khashoggi co-founded and operated the Safari Club, an alliance of pro-US top intelligence agents from allied countries. The group first met in 1976. The goal of the group was to coordinate covert operations supplying arms and funds. In 1977, the Safari Club responded to the Shabba 1 conflict in Zaire in the effort of protecting the French and Belgian mining interests by supporting the dictator Mobutu, a long-time friend of Khashoggi. Backed by Saudi financing, the Safari Club provided arms to Somalia during its failed 1977 invasion of Ethiopia. Somalia lost one-third of its army and half of its air force in the conflict. The loss led to a civil war which ruined the country. The Safari Club helped to mediate talks between Egypt and Israel, leading to Egypt Sadat's visit to Jerusalem in 1977, the Camp David Accords in 1978, and the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty in 1979. From 1979, Safari Club members, the BCCI and the CIA, cooperated in arming and funding the Afghan Mujahideen to oppose the Soviet Union. The US and Saudi Arabia agreed to match each other in funding. A special relationship between Saudis and US really began to flourish after 1981, as the Saudis turned to the Reagan administration to safeguard their orders of advanced weapons from congressional interdiction. In 1981, Khashoggi became a client of Jeffrey Epstein's newly founded Intercontinental Assets Group, Inc., and helped him broker armaments deals. IAG also began to work with African leaders associated with Khashoggi. Khashoggi was directly involved in helping to organise and fund the top secret Operation Moses in 1984 to airlift to safety 14,000 Ethiopian Jews from Sudan to Israel during a famine caused by the Ethiopian Civil War. Khashoggi was implicated in the Iran-Contra affair as a key middleman in the arms for hostages exchange along with Iranian arms dealer Manucha Gorbanifa and in a complex series of events was found to have borrowed money for these arms purchases from the Bank of Credit and Commerce International BCCI with Saudi and United States backing. April 1989 
Khashoggi was charged with conspiring with former President Marcos of the Philippines and family to hide money and property that they had stolen from their country. Now let's take a look at the Jeffrey Epstein timeline. Epstein was born in 1953 in Brooklyn, New York to Jewish American parents. Epstein started working in September 1974 as a teacher at the Dalton School on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Epstein allegedly showed inappropriate behaviour towards underage students at the time. In 1976, Epstein joined Burr Stearns after an acquaintance Al Greenberg offered him a job. He swiftly moved to become an options trader, working in the special products division and then advised the bank's wealthiest clients such as Seagram's president Edgar Bronfman on tax mitigation strategies. In 1980, Epstein became a limited partner at Burr Stearns. In 1981, he was asked to leave Burr Stearns for, according to his sworn testimony, being guilty of a Reg D violation. Even though Epstein departed abruptly, he remained close to Jimmy Kane and Al Greenberg and was a client of Burr Stearns until its collapse in 2008. In April 1981, Epstein founded his own consulting firm, Intercontinental Assets Group Inc., during this period, Saudi Arabian businessman Adnan Khashoggi became a client. Epstein helped broker global armament deals, including the sale of major weaponry like the Airwax aircraft. Likely via Khashoggi, Epstein picked up African dictators as clients to help them hide their stolen assets. Epstein obtained an Austrian passport, issued in 1982, with a fake name to enter the UK, Spain and Saudi Arabia. While in London, Epstein met with Douglas Lease, who was involved in brokering the first of a series of controversial British arms deals that involved Khashoggi, known as the Al Yamama deal. Epstein is thought to have been working on Khashoggi's behalf. After the Airwax deal and the Israel lobby's opposition, the Saudis looked to the UK for a more reliable supplier of high tech aircraft. Khashoggi and Epstein's similarities Both were big risk takers. From Epstein's Reg D violation at Burr Stearns, travelling on a fake passport, to his pedophilia, sex trafficking of minors, sexual entrapment operations. He also assisted wealthy clients, including dictators, to hide their asset. Khashoggi dealt with controversial figures, assisting in moving their assets. He was involved in security fraud, bribery, racketeering, conspiracy, mail fraud and obstruction of justice. girls or women. Khashoggi was known for having a harem of women that included pleasure wives. Adam was known as a party giver on a gargantuan scale and a supreme hedonist who loved to create pleasure for others as well as enjoying plenty of it for himself. It makes one wonder how much influence Khashoggi had on Epstein who surrounded himself with underage girls and arranged for them to pleasure himself and his friends. Intelligence Agents Khashoggi co-founded the supranational intelligence partnership known as the Safari Club. Around the time Adnan became a client of IAG, Epstein stated to some that he was an intelligence agent. The vagueness of a specific intelligence agency leaves plenty of speculation and may have been an agent of the Safari Club and covert operations. Khashoggi certainly opened a lot of doors into the world of intelligence for Epstein. Some people claim that they know how Jeffrey Epstein acquired his fake Austrian passport, but offer no proof that stands up to scrutiny. One hypothesis I present is that the passport was acquired for Epstein via Adnan Khashoggi. So let's take a look at some of the reasons this could be true. Taking into consideration information presented thus far, we know that the two men knew each other and Khashoggi was a client of Epstein's. We know Epstein helped broker arms deals with Khashoggi and worked with other clients, very likely via Khashoggi's connections. Around this time, Epstein started to mention to some that he was an intelligence agent. If Epstein was legitimately concerned about his personal protection and wanted to be protected from potential kidnappers, hijackers or terrorists, Epstein's lawyers said that his Jewish faith 
and substantial wealth made him a target while travelling in the Middle East. That suggests he was travelling to Saudi Arabia on behalf of Khashoggi. So let's take a look at Khashoggi's connection to Austria. Khashoggi was known for throwing wild parties in Vienna. In 1985, celebrity reporter Robin Leach reported Khashoggi threw a five-day birthday party in Vienna for his eldest son. Another example would be in October 1984, where pilots of Khashoggi's plane flew in guests to attend one of his bashes in Vienna. Khashoggi was also known for his whoremongering, and in Austria, prostitution is legal. Khashoggi had such a reputation for his wealth and connections, he could use his influence to get things like a fake passport. That aside, Austria played a role in objectives of the Safari Club. The group helped to mediate talks between Egypt and Israel. Prior to peace talks, President Gerald Ford flew to Salzburg on May the 31st, 1975, for a bilateral meeting with Egyptian President Anzwar el-Sadat. According to the New York Times, Egypt and other Arab states see the meeting as a crucial event, a crossroads that may set the Middle East on the road to peace or to war. Sadat was flying in from Vienna, accompanied by Chancellor Bruno Kreisky. Khashoggi had proposed a huge telecommunications project for Egypt to be funded by US aid. Chancellor Bruno Kreisky became involved in the project and things really took off after Camp David in 1979. The project was a gift to Egypt for allowing the two frameworks. The first framework for peace in the Middle East, which dealt with the Palestinian territories and was written without the participation of the Palestinians and it was condemned by the United Nations. The second framework was the conclusion of a peace treaty between Egypt and Israel that led directly to the 1979 Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. This event marked the beginning of the large-scale American involvement in the telecommunications project in Egypt. The European Allies were also involved in the project a consortium of Siemens Germany, Siemens Austria, and Thomas CSF of France all helped with the project. So you can see the resourcefulness of Khashoggi and how he was able to bring together leaders, countries, and business to achieve objectives. A lot of the pieces of the puzzle to the origins of Epstein's fake Austrian passport surround Adnan Khashoggi, making him the likely candidate in Epstein's life at the time that could help him acquire it. In 1984, due to the Israel lobby's influence over the US Congress, presenting difficulty for future arms deals to be approved, Khashoggi explored expanding Saudi arms business with the UK for the future high-tech defense infrastructure needs. This led to the brokerage of what became known as the Al Yamama arms deal involving British arms dealer Sir Douglas Lees and Adnan Khashoggi. Sometime between 1984 and before Stephen Hoffenberg met Epstein in 1987, Jeffrey had developed a friendly relationship with Sir Douglas Lees. Lees introduced Epstein to Hoffenberg and spoke of Epstein's genius, skill in selling securities and his lack of moral compass. Naturally, future Ponzi schemer Stephen Hoffenberg gravitated to his new acquaintance. I was very impressed with the unbelievable personality and unbelievable ability of Epstein to become a friend. Epstein was a brilliant, brilliant Wall Street mastermind in criminality for securities fraud. I was greatly impressed with his demeanour, his ability to understand complex securities underwritings and sales to investors. Hoffenberg recalled. In 1987, Hoffenberg hired Epstein to work for Tower Financial Corporation. In 1993, the Tower's Ponzi scheme imploded. The Securities and Exchange Commission began a civil action case against Hoffenberg and Tower's Financial filed for bankruptcy. Epstein was not punished for his role in Tower Financial's Ponzi scheme. According to Hoffenberg, Jeffrey Epstein's ability as a master criminal got him out of the penalty box. Epstein didn't just escape justice, he moved on to new adventures with millions in his pocket. 
Epstein was able to fund his criminal enterprise, Financial Trust Company, in J. Epstein and Company, Hoffenberg alleged. There was another, I believe. It was International Asset Collections. He was able to fund it with the assets and money from the tower financial crimes. When trustees came in to operate the company, they hired Alan Cohen, who hired one of Epstein's best friends and lawyers, Indy Khan, to investigate, which explains this occurrence. The occurrence being that Epstein got off scot-free. This has been John Swin from ExposeTheEnemy.com sharing my research. Until next time, take care.